In a world where people are losing their minds, who will be the voice of sanity, of logic, of rationale, of morality, and truth? This podcast is looking for like-minded people to stand up to the insane and be real. The Recovery Atheist Podcast is calling you to step forward and be counted. Welcome to the Voice of Change. Welcome to the Recovery Atheist Podcast. Well, hello everybody out there in Podcast Nation. This is the Recovery Atheist coming to you from the Trey Entertainment Studios. And I just want to say that I am so happy that you're with me today. player sorry for the delay everybody anybody who's watching me right now all right let's try this again shall we Hello, everybody out there in Podcast Nation. This is the Recovery Atheist, and I am so happy that you've been able to join me in this next episode. How's everybody doing out there tonight? I hope everyone is doing wonderful. Uh, I hope so far 2021 is treating you well. Uh, I know for me, uh, so far it has. It's uh, been a good thing. Um... No complaints. Hopefully it'll continue on. Next week, uh, we've got the new president being put into place, into office. That is good. Can't say anything bad about that. Uh, And I hope uh, everyone with the COVID and everything that's out there, everyone is doing well uh, with that as well. If you do have it, speedy recovery, okay? Uh, So today, it's been kind of an interesting day i got up i got to sleep in today for the first time in a while which was nice i got to get caught you know caught up on sleep that's always a good thing um and so i got up and got ready for the the packer game today the playoffs against the rams uh and as i was sitting there you know getting ready for it and then the game started you know you get that anxiety that nervousness over it going oh i hope we win uh, it would really feel bad if we lost those kind of things and you know how do we how am I gonna get over it if they lose <laughs> you know those typical thoughts that we have that run through our head when we're going through certain things in our lives uh, yes I know it's just a game but uh, you know it's important I want my team to win obviously just like the Rams fans wanted to win well, the Packers, uh, of course, they, have, they came through and they got the win. And, of course, I'm happy with their victory. I'm happy with what they're doing. We're back in the NFC Championship again. But I started thinking about it. What do I do? What, what, uh, what do I do tonight for the podcast? What do I do tonight to talk about it? Um, so the thing I wanted to talk about tonight is... Victory and defeat. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with victory and how do we deal with when we have to deal with defeat? How how do we get over it? How do we find a way to live with that and be able to move on and stay strong? Now, everyone talks about victory. Everybody says victory is something that is nice to have, but as we all know, there's people out there uh, that sometimes are, are uh, gloaters. Sometimes they're people that when they do have victory happen, they, they brag about it or they're just not nice people to be around when that happens. 
For me personally, yes. Am I happy that my team won? Of course. But I don't want to rub it into them. They had a fine year, a great year. It just so happened today we were on the better end of it. But how do we deal with victory? How do we deal with defeat? Now, victory, the definition, is an act of defeating an enemy or an opponent in a battle, game, or other competition. So, getting serious about it, not just a game, not just a football game, not just a basketball game, uh, a video game, whatever it is. How about having just victory in life? Not everybody has experienced a lot of that. Um, or if they have, it's been very fleeting. It hasn't lasted long. For me personally, I have had victory off and on in my life. But I've also had a lot of defeat in life. So someone who, say, in recovery is trying to find victory over their addiction, over their uh, problems that they've had with whatever drug of choice that they're having. They're trying to find victory in that. They're trying to win, correct? They're trying to get back on track. They're trying to get their life back, and they deal with victory. And when you do go through that, though, like you look at football teams, in the history of the NFL, there's only been one team that has gone through the entire year perfect and won it all. The rest of the time, the teams that have won it all have gone through a year where they've had some losses. And somehow found a way to take that loss and turn it into a good thing and be able to carry it with them the rest of the way and get them to win it all. And I think in recovery, that is something that is hard for a lot of people to be able to accomplish. I know that for a fact when I talk about my story. In my story, I'll just go with the, the most recent one, this last year when I was in Minneapolis. Things were going well. I had, I had victory. I had a good job going. Uh, I had a good house, sober living home I was living in, in Minneapolis, Richfield area. I was um, going to meetings. I had good friends in, in recovery. I had The job I was working at the time was going well. And eventually even gotten a girlfriend in the process. Um, things were looking good. Therapy was going good. I had victory in, in my life at that moment. But then, as we always say, we always say in bad times, this too shall pass. Well, in good times, this too shall pass as well. You're going to have ups and downs, especially when you're going through recovery. Um, not everything is going to be easy. Not everything in life is going to be great. Sometimes you're going to have to fight and just get through it. So at that time, when everything was going well, You know, in my mind, I, you know, I have that fear of just things falling apart of, of failure. So, you know, I was thinking, when is the next shoe going to drop? Which is something that I deal with all the time, whether it be at work or here at the sober living home or just in my recovery in general. Finances. So what am I going to do when this happens, when, when something goes wrong? Now... Since I've been here in Duluth, um, I would say for the most part, everything has been up. But I still have things that happen that um, I'm not so happy about. I would say this time around, though, the ups have definitely been a lot more than the downs. And I think a lot of that has to do with the work that I'm putting into my recovery. Uh, I'm staying vigilant and determined do what I need to do and take that next step. So when something happens that might not be as good for me as I would think it would be, I'm able to press through that and move forward and get through it and let something else good happen. In recovery, that is very, very hard to be able to do. 
So, coming into December last year, I've got my mother and father coming in for Christmas. Things are looking good. Things are looking great. They're going to meet the girlfriend. We're going to spend some time. Packers beat the Vikings for the division last year on Christmas. Things are going good. But at that point, at that time, I would have to say, now that I go back and I think about it, I still, you know, I was struggling, though, a little bit because I had a lot of fear in my life of this is going a little too good, right? So I get into January. I'm thinking everything is great. Um, I really felt like I'd made it. Things were going good. And then some stuff happened. First off, some relationship issues with the girlfriend happened. Some of the the way she was responding and I was responding to the situation was not going the way I would like it to go. It seemed like we were falling away from each other than as close as we were at the beginning of it. Uh, It just seemed like things were falling apart that way. I was not happy about it. We had had some pretty intense conversations, and it got to the point where... We broke up. At the same time, this all happened within, in the same week. At the same time, there was an issue with my job that had happened a couple man- months before that I really didn't look at it as my fault. Yes, maybe I could have been a little bit more aware of where things were, but I was backing it in, backing this truck in, uh, this big flatbed to make sure that I wasn't hitting anyone behind me as they were directing me on where to put the flatbed so they could put a HVAC unit onto my flatbed. Didn't realize there was a metal dumpster to the left of me and I happened to accidentally run into it with the front fender of the truck. Now this is a brand new Kentworth, so it's a fiberglass uh, frame or fiberglass fender and it cracked it, okay? So it had to be fixed and replaced. I was honest about it, upfront about it with the boss, thought we had figured it out, gotten through it. You know, I had busted my ass for him. I was always the one to go over and beyond to do what I needed to do and have, you know, if I had to get up early in the morning to head down to Rochester, you know, and be up at three in the morning, I could do it. I thought I had proven to him enough that way. Well, we got the bill back for it. It was like 3000 First, I thought that was ridiculous. I, I still to this day don't understand how that cost 3000 but supposedly it did. He was not too happy about it. He had definitely some resentments over it, and he took those resentments, and he took it out on me about it, and no matter how good I was doing, it seemed like he always had a way to complain about something I was doing. And the harder... I fought it, the more it would get worse. The more I tried to fix it, the more it got worse. Same way with the relationship with the girlfriend. The more I tried to fix it, the more it got worse. So I ended up leaving that job. I ended up being let go from that position. And instead of looking at it as defeat in that moment and saying, okay, I'm going to get stronger from this. Obviously, the job and the girl was not what I needed at this time, and there's something else that's going to come along and doors are going to open. We always say that all the time. When one door closes, another one will open, which is how I look at life today. When I have something like that happen today, it's like, all right, fine. Uh, One door's closed, something else will come available, right? And I'll get to that later in this episode about how that how I deal with it today so I lost I I, you know I lost I I I had a lot of loss at that time and instead of doing what I needed to do which I'll get into later in the episode of some things you can do to deal with that I went back to what I had previously learned in the past what I had done is get a big old bottle of vodka Get a hotel room and just hide in a vodka bottle, drink myself away. 
So that's what I did. Am I proud of that? No, I'm not. Do I think that was a coward move? Yes, I do. But that's what I knew. That's what I had come comfortable with. That when I run into those situations, that's what I'm going to do. Now, of course, back then as well, I look at my recovery environment and my sober support I have today compared to what I had last year at this time. Uh, it wasn't as good last year. Definitely wasn't. I did not have the connections that I do today. This is just a year ago I'm talking about. Last January, the January before. So that's what I did. Sat in there for about five days. I finally stumbled my way back to the sober living home. Crashed for a couple days. Of course, the sober living home manager came to me, breathalyzed me. Uh, I had to. I was on lockdown at the house. Uh, they brought me in for another assessment, put me back into outpatient, but allowed me to stay at the sober living home. I switched jobs uh, to a courier company. I really enjoyed the job. I was delivering library books um, to different libraries and picking up postal mail as well on the route. Um, really enjoyed it, but I still felt defeated. I still felt like I hadn't given it up. I hadn't moved on and said, all right, well, that happened for a reason. And it's time for me to move on. I still was stuck in it. And then I'm having to go back to outpatient groups during the week. So that's taking up a lot of my time. It, it just felt like I was going almost back to ground zero. And it's, it's amazing when that happens how slippery the slope is. I was living on a fine line at that time. I, I, it could go either way. I could get stronger from it and become a better person in recovery, or most likely I'm going to fall, keep falling back and back and it's going to get really bad and I'll be back into primary treatment, which is what happened. You can't maintain in where I was at at that point without either getting better and stronger or you're going to fall back into treatment. So I knew that. I'm sitting in outpatient going, all right, I'm either going to get through this and it's going to make me better and this isn't going to happen again or I'm going to fall back and give up again like I've done in the past. So, of course, that's what I know, right? Failure. Defeat. So that's what I did. I fell back. I fell back uh, into my old ways again. I made it for about two weeks. Came home from work one day. On my way back driving from Mankato the entire time, I'm thinking, I just want to get a bottle and get in a hotel room. And that's what I did. I got home. I punched out. I went home. Packed up a few things, pawned off my PlayStation 4 to get some money to be able to hit the hotel and get a bottle, and did that. And I ended up going and uh, getting a auto loan on my car for 600, and I battened down the hatches in the hotel or the motel room and drank my sorrows away. Defeated. Sat in there for over a week. I spent up all my money, got a DWI, defeated. Ran out of money, had nowhere to go. Told the, hotel, the motel manager, who I'd gotten to know pretty well, said, just call the police and say I need to go to detox. That's where they took me. The entire time of detox, I'm defeated. Anytime, I don't know if you've ever been to detox, some of you that are out there. But if you haven't, it is not a pleasant experience at all. It's just not. I'm not sitting here right now going, oh, man, I sure wish I could go and have a, an evening in the detox facility. <laughs> no. It's not very nice. It's very uncomfortable. It is not where you want to be. So I'm miserable, defeated in there, had some nasty using nightmares. Had some, you know, when you're coming down in a withdrawal, nightmares can be so bad. And, I mean, these were terrifying. 
couldn't get any sleep. All I wanted to do was get out of there. Um, I had gotten paid my last check from the courier place I was working at while I was in detox over that weekend. I get out that Monday to leave, and all I can think of is getting another motel room so I can go there, drink, and sleep on a regular bed and, and try to get some rest. That's what I did. Didn't go so well. By the second night, I was so gone. I was saying stuff on Facebook that I, I regret. And uh, I love my mother. Thank you, Mom, for coming and, you know, or, or calling the cops, letting them know where I was at, and then they end up taking me back to detox. Again, I'm defeated. Because in that situation, not only am I going back to detox, but a guy that I had met at detox that was staying at the hotel with me stole my shit. All my stuff that I had that was in the back of his car, he just took off, and I was left with pretty much the clothes on my back. Now, I got lucky. I had a lot of stuff that was in storage um, at the sober living home I was living in, so I still had some stuff to be able to uh, salvage. But he took all my good shit, that's for sure. He took my jewelry, bracelet. I mean, he took all my good stuff. So I'm starting over fresh, right? You want to talk about feeling defeated. So here I am. I'm in detox again. I'm in that detox facility for like a couple weeks. I mean, it wasn't like they got me into treatment the next day. It took a couple weeks. Now, remember, this is going around when COVID started hitting. Uh, no, no lockdown jet had been put into place. Uh, but it was getting close. Um, it was very cold outside at that time in Minneapolis in the, the negatives, uh, the below zeros. A uh, lot of people coming into detox, not always a bed available. So, and, and treatments, they were filling up pretty quick with people, which is what happens in the wintertime. So I'm feeling pretty defeated. I'm sitting every day with nothing to do in these detoxes around people that are nuts and crazy and rude and just... I'm losing my mind. I'm like, just get me into treatment. So they finally did. They found PCC out in Delano. At that point, when I arrived, well, I got out of detox, went back to my buddy's house, uh, Aaron, in St. Paul, one of my podcasting uh, collaborators. Uh, Super Tramp is his name, if you ever want to look him up. Um, he got me back on my feet. Got out of there because I had two days before going into treatment. I really didn't want to be there and have them pick me up there. I needed a couple nights rest. Aaron could provide me with a sober area to go, a sober place to be. So that's what I did. I went there, had two nights to be able to sleep and get good sleep, eat well, and have some true recovery friendship um, happening. He helped me out, bought me some socks, because I was almost out of socks. He just helped me get me back up on my feet and get me ready for treatment. But I remember the morning that treatment was coming to pick me up to take me out to Delta. Couldn't really sleep very well that night. I was uh, just really anxious. Like, oh, back to treatment. And if you've been in treatment, especially multiple treatments, it gets to be very tiresome having to be in those places, listening in group and hearing the same things, sitting there kicking yourself like, why do I got to be here again? When am I ever going to learn? Defeated. So that morning, I remember I was watching a lot of videos, music videos on YouTube. A lot of, a lot of stuff hitting hard. NF. Uh, eight graves. There's a few groups I listen to when I'm in that mode to try to get my emotions out. And so I'm, I'm literally, it's like four in the morning, knowing they're going to pick me up around 10, 11 o'clock, and I'm just, I'm crying, crying my eyes out, just letting it go. Defeated. I got out there to Delano. Defeated first month I was there, even though I was sober, I felt defeated. I felt like there was no chance of victory. There was no chance. Even with me in treatment, I'm like, yeah, here I am again. 
I've got a bed to sleep in and food, but how long is this going to last before I, I blow it all again? And sure enough, a month into it, I leave treatment and go relapse. Get another hotel room for one night in a vodka bottle. Relapse, back to detox. Treatment facility brings me back out. And I remember thinking at that time, all right, Dell. Nothing is changing here, Dell. Nothing is changing. Everything is the same. Are you just going to continue to keep this vicious cycle going? There has to be something more than this, right? There has to be something better than what I'm doing right now. But no, Dell, he has all the answers. He knows what's right for him. He knows what he needs to do. I'm not going to listen to anybody else. I'm not going to listen to anyone else who might be able to give me guidance on how I could have victory. I'm just going to stay in my little pity party and do what I want to do. Be a selfish prick. Well, that changed. I got back to treatment uh, after that episode and detox again. They brought me back out and said they wanted to keep me. First thing that was different about any other situation. First off, that was the first time I've ever relapsed in treatment. So I've never, I've always been the goody two shoes little boy that comes in there, says what needs to be said. He's a, a, you know, senior peer. He's a pillar in the community, and just kick him out. I'll, you know, I've always said what needs to be said to get me out. This time it wasn't that way. This time I, I was tired. I was done. I was done trying to keep that mask on. I couldn't do it anymore. So I got back, first thing I noticed is the guys that were in the house and my, my roommate as well were so excited to have me back and I could tell they were so scared and worried for me when I left. First time I actually seen, wow, I've got people that actually are concerned and, and they want me to do this. So that was, that was great. I acted out in groups. I, I wasn't going to hide it anymore. If I was upset or angry or didn't like something, I just said it. It got me in trouble. It did. Um, they never put me on a behavioral contract, but there was a couple times they probably could have. I had a guy that was uh, there. Um, I'm, he was of a religious background, uh, not Christian, but of a different religious background, and was saying some very derogatory things about gay people and being pansexual and being that my counselor as well being gay we didn't really go for that and I mean these were very insensitive stuff that he was saying like you know in my country we would string you up in a tree that kind of thing he had he was very much against gays he was very much against it and felt that we were that we should all just pretty much be killed and he would say these things in groups so i i couldn't do it anymore i'm not gonna sit there and be all nicey nicey i'm done with being the nice guy i've taken enough abuse in my life i'm not gonna take it anymore So that's what I did. I lashed out. I lashed out at him. I lashed out at my counselor. I lashed out at the program. And yeah, I got pulled into the counselor's office a few times um, and ridden over the coals about it that I need to pull it together. But I did. Little by little, I started getting better. I started finding different ways and coping skills to be able to deal with it. I know that we say that a lot, coping skills. But it's very, very true. I had to learn how to deal with those situations and how to react to them and what was the best way to deal with it. Well, for me taking the high road and biting my tongue and keeping my cool as best I could through all that, he ended up being discharged. I ended up moving on to be graduated and things went well. I made a decision not to go back to South Minneapolis because I felt if I did that and something went wrong. I know how to survive there, where the booze is at. I know the, the homeless community. I know where I can do this and do that and get away with it. It's like, no, I'm not going to put myself back in that environment. So I decided to come to Duluth. And it has been the best decision I've ever made. 
If you're in treatment in Minneapolis and you're looking for a sober living home, we have the best sober living home in Duluth. And as far as I'm concerned, the best in Minnesota. Great Lakes Sober Living. It has changed my life. And the homes that we live in here, we have two men's homes and one women, woman's home or women's home. Uh, the two men's homes, obviously I've not seen the women's homes, uh, home, but the two men's homes that we have are mansions. They're immaculate. The first one I was in, I'm managing the new one now, the house, ma- uh, the house that I'm in now, I'm the house manager of it. It's brand new. It's been fully remodeled. The other home is like a mansion. It's it's like a, uh, a museum. All wood, all original wood. It's just glorious. I have never seen sober living homes like this. It was the best decision I've ever made, is what I'm trying to say. The sober recovery community here is absolutely amazing. So much of it. And I'm grateful to been able to have that because it started bringing me out of defeat. It started getting it in my head that, well, wait a minute. Maybe I can have victory over this. Maybe I can win. Maybe I can make some changes and I don't have to keep doing what I've been doing. Got through the outpatient here. It wasn't easy. You had to do outpatient in the morning, work 3 to 11 in the evening, working full time. Um, all the house meetings, AA meetings, I was running ragged. It was very stressful the first three months I was here because of all the stuff I had to get done. But I did it. I kept pushing forward. I got it done. Got through it. Was able to switch the first shift. Things were going well with that. Uh, everything has been great. Um, but then things happened. My DWI came through uh, for the court cases, had to deal with that. That was a bummer. Was really concerned and anxious about it. That ended up working out better than I ever thought it could be for the situation. Couldn't ask for a better scenario, a better uh, result than what happened. It's given me a chance to restart life and not have that be uh, a huge uh, like check mark on my life of a bad decision. It was a bad decision, but I don't have to live with it the rest of my life. I can actually move forward and grow. Job situation. Got passed over. I wanted to be a supervisor. One day I think I'll probably will be um, as time goes on, but It just wasn't in the cards for right now. That was disappointing. I was being grouped to be the house manager over at the other house, the first house I moved into. Um, Was really excited about it and ready to do it. It didn't happen. Ended up getting given to somebody else and didn't feel I had a, a good enough relationship with the other guys in the house and that I isolate too much. That was a bummer. I felt like I was kicked in the teeth. Felt defeated, right? What that did for me is push me, though. It pushed me to have more of a relationship with the other guys in the house, and it allowed me to focus on what I needed to focus on, which was like this podcast. So I started doing this podcast. I started focusing on that and putting my time and effort into that. Got involved uh, with another studio company. Uh, we started. I started broadcasting out of their studio. Things were going wonderful there. And then, again, another setback. We had uh, differences and creative, you know, ideas, creative differences in the direction that we were wanting to go. I had to back out. I could not continue to do it uh, because I didn't believe in what we were doing, and I had to find a different route so I had to back out that was disappointing I went from having a professional studio that I'm in to now I'm in my bedroom doing the podcasting felt defeated 
But then again, I kept working hard. I kept taking the next step. I kept saying, all right, another door will open. And it did. The house owner of these homes decided to buy another home. He felt that over the three months or so that I had been working after uh, he had told me I wasn't going to be house manager, that I had grown, and that I was someone that he would be looking at as someone who could do that, play that role. Not only that, but he would provide me with a room in the house to be able to use as my studio to where I don't have to go anywhere. I can go to work, come home, do my house managing uh, jobs that I have to do here with the guys in the house and be able to podcast right from the house. Wow. Talk about going from where I was at to where I'm at today. So today, as I'm talking to you right now, I am sitting in my studio here at the house. It's in the basement, a room off of the, uh, the basement. Um, it's a decent sized room. I'm in the process of remodeling it. Um, all the different stereo foam panels uh, and tiles that are going up. Um, just everything, lighting, uh, eventually, I'll have camera work in here, uh, you know, high definition camera work for videos and maybe even uh, some displays, some display screen from behind me to be able to use. But when it's all said and done, this is going to be a enclosed professional studio. So I have gone from my bedroom to when it's all said and done, I've had victory. I'm doing what I love to do. All because I didn't let those previous little defeats get in the way of me continuing to progress and become better in recovery. You know, they always say it's not whether or not you, you lose the battle, it's whether or not you win the war, right? And that's, that's the way I feel. I feel I'm winning the war. I, I lose some battles here and there, but I keep moving forward and I'm continually moving toward winning the war. So that's where I'm at with that. That's my story on that to give a little strength and hope. And that's why I'm talking about this subject today is that you can be at the lowest of the low. I've been there. I've been exactly. You might be in that spot right now, tonight. You're in the lowest of the low. You feel so defeated. You feel like all is lost. It's not. You can make changes and you can get your life back if you want it. Don't give up. What's funny about the word defeat is the definition. It can be used in so many ways. It's one thing that's beautiful about the English English language is that words can be used in a couple different ways. A lot of them can. You can defeat somebody to win victory over them. Or you can lose something, prevention of success. You can win or lose with the word defeat. Okay, like the word consequence. When you hear the word consequence, most of us look at that as that is a punishment or a derogatory word. Consequence is just the results, you know, to whatever you're doing. It's just a result. So a consequence of, um, you know, not showing up at work, you're going to be fired. Consequence of going to school and getting A's and, and passing your courses, the consequence of that is you're going to get a degree or a diploma. It can be both a positive and a negative. And that's the same way with defeat. It can be a negative or a positive. It's how you want to look at it. Some synonyms in the verb form is beat. This is for defeat. Beat, best, conquer, dispatch, master, overcome, prevail, stop, surmount, triumph, and win. As a noun, it's 
beating, loss, rout, trounce, whip, and lift. Now, when we're facing defeat, we can either look at it as a negative or a positive. There are ways to be able to change your, your mindset with that. You can take a defeat and crumble and let it destroy everything that you're working hard in your life for. Or you can use it as a catapult to push you to where you want to be in your life and achieve that goal. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. That's a line that gets used a lot. It's in the big book, That Way of AA. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the ugliness of a few trees. You're focusing so much on one little thing that you're missing out on the bigger picture of the good things you have in your life. So when I have something happen that is bad or something that I'm not happy about, that's one thing. But how many other multiple things do I have in my life that are good? Focus on that. Tomorrow's another day. Just because today has not gone the way that you want it to go doesn't mean that tomorrow's going to be the same. Focus on what you can do in the day that you're in to make it better. But remember, tomorrow will come and you'll have another day. Live to see another day. You can't win them all. Nobody in life wins everything. If they do, they're the luckiest sons of bitches in the world. You can't win all the time. You're going to have loss. Choose your battles wisely. This is one that, for me, I have to get better at, and I am getting better. I've got to choose my battles. I can't always, every single time something happens, need to go into attack mode. Sometimes I need to back up a little bit. Take the foot off the pedal a little bit. Look at it and say, okay, is this something I really should be concerning and using so much energy on, or is this something I can put on the back burner and deal with later? Choose your battles. You'd be surprised if you're able to do that, how that battle that you thought was some huge thing ends up not being anything at all. What goes around comes around. You might see other people out there that are having good things happen in their lives, and you're jealous of it, and I get it. I've been there. I know what that feels like. But remember, what goes around comes around. Eventually, it will be your time. Don't give up. Don't give up right when you're right on the cusp uh, uh, of having that happen. Don't give up when that corner, you're coming around that corner and it's right there. Don't. And then have realistic expectations. Don't, don't expect that you're going to be the CEO of a company within the first year of you being in sobriety or recovery. And it's people outside of recovery as well. Don't expect that you're going to be making a million dollars a year when you know that the chances of that are probably not very good. Be realistic. Go after goals that are achievable, measurable, things that you know you can accomplish. Start with baby steps that way. Get that accomplishment. Move on to the next. There's nothing wrong with pushing your limits. I, I do that with my podcast. When I started this, it started off as just, you know, getting my voice out there. If I have a couple, you know, friends of mine and family listen to it, great. And then it's just gradually grown. It's like a snowball effect, little by little, to the point now where I'm in 17 countries. People are listening to me. Um, I get people that email me and people that talk to me on Facebook about the last episode and things like that and how, you know, their comments and opinions on it. I love it that Ireland and France, I'm listened to extinct, you know, a lot in those countries. Um, shout out to them. Shout out to people here in the States that are listening to me. All those people that you maybe have found me through a friend, 
through something, uh, another podcast maybe that you've listened to, that are listening to me all over the country, thank you. But I'm setting myself up for measurable goals. My first goal was just to get to 100 downloads. Then then 250, then 500, then 1,000. I've got the 1,000 downloads. Now it's let's get to 1,500. Let's get to 20 countries. I'm at 75, 76 episodes. Let's get to 100 episodes. Let's just keep building. Let's keep building that support network I have. Let's keep building the connections I have. Let's start connecting more. That's my goal right now and my expectations of this podcast is I want to extend out and start touching base with other podcasts. Collaborate. We've got another interview coming up here in a couple weeks. Uh, with a marijuana advocate uh, talking about the laws and the legalization of it, and I think it'll be a great discussion to have. Um, I want to go into other topics, you know, other than recovery, because when it comes to my life, life isn't just recovery. That's another big thing in recovery I find people missing the point is, yes, but not er- you're in recovery, but not everything in your life has to be totally focused on that. Focus on some other stuff. Find out what your hobbies are, what you like to do, what what things you like to discuss, what you're passionate about. I'm passionate about a lot of different topics. Where I want to talk with these podcasters about these things and get the information out, our opinions, our thoughts. You need to learn a lesson from the defeats. You need to learn a lesson from it. What did you do wrong? What could you have done better? How can you improve this? This is where, when you have defeat, this is where you can grow and become stronger. Just become a better person. Completely. Every failure puts you in a step closer to success. Every time I've relapsed and had to go back to treatment, every single time has put me closer and closer to success in my recovery. See opportunity in every failure. Every failure that you have, you got to look for the points of, of how you can become better and, and use it as an opportunity to become better. Don't shut down. Look for guidance from the experts. Go to people who have been through these issues before and have had struggles with it and find out what they did to overcome it and to become better. I am not going to go to someone if I'm wanting to be the head podcaster, one of the best in the business, I am not going to go to somebody who has a podcast where they do maybe once a month do a podcast. They're really not interested in it. I'm going to go to the people that have success in it. How did you do it? You want to be a millionaire? You're not going to go to a homeless guy. How do do I become a millionaire? You're going to go to the people that have the success in whatever you're trying to find. So in my recovery when I'm feeling defeated and I want to keep going forward, who do I go to? I go to my sponsor who has almost eight years of sobriety. I go to the house owner, Brian, who has like 18 years. I go to people that have the success that I am looking for. What is your suggestion on how I can do this better? And then shut the fuck up and listen. Take it to heart. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on what you're really wanting to accomplish. Don't let it discourage you and trip you up. If you make a mistake, take responsibility for it. Don't blame others. Stop blaming others. Stop playing the fucking victim role. That is getting you nowhere. Nobody cares about your playing the victim role. Stop complaining about everything. You think you're the only person that goes through loss or defeat? You think you're the only person that's gone through relapse or treatment or whatever it is? Stop acting like a victim and blaming everybody else for your mistakes. Own up to it. 
take responsibility and learn from it, change it so it doesn't have to happen again. Continue to give your best and continue to believe in yourself that you can do it. Some self-confidence is not going to hurt you. Okay? It's not going to hurt you. You need to recognize the fail that failure is a part of this, this process. It's part of progress. Focus on the next step that you got to do. It's not a destination that you're trying to achieve. It's not a sprint that you can just get there. It's a journey to get there, and it's going to be a marathon. You can't get there in an instant. You need to let it go. I know people, you hear people say that, let it go, let it go. But it's the truth. You need to let it go. It's not accomplishing anything for you to dwell on it. Let it go. Don't compare yourself to other people and what their successes are. Don't look at yourself and look at someone else's and say, obviously I'm not a success because of look at them and what they have. Do not do that. That will trip you up every fucking time. I don't give a shit what successes they have. I'm concerned about my success. What do I have that I'm happy about in my life? Not what they have. I'm not here to keep up with the Joneses. I'm here to find out what Dell wants. What makes Dell happy and content and peaceful? Prove your doubters wrong. I hate haters. Haters is something that we're going to deal with all our lives. And the thing that's with that is haters, there's a reason why they hate. They hate you and talk shit about you because you have something that they want. Don't let that get to you because they hate on I love it when I get haters. That means I'm obviously hitting a nerve. I'm doing something right. Prove your doubters wrong. The ones that say, yeah, we'll see how well he does. Or, yeah, mm -hmm, we'll see if he does something with this or if he does d gets it right or whatever. Fuck them. Prove them wrong. Let it put a fucking fire inside of you. Make them look like the idiot. At this point, I mean, talking about this, at this point, you got to take a step back. Remember, the world doesn't revolve around you. It's not all about you and your ego. Cut the shit. Cut the ego. Cut that bullshit. I am no different than you, than you are of me. We all have the same issues we deal with. We're all struggling with a lot of the same things. I am no better than you, and you are no better than me. Let's cut the shit on that bullshit. We don't need to do that anymore. That's the biggest thing that's going on right now in politics. It's all about look at me, look at me, look at me, and we're better than you, better than you, better than you. And nothing is being accomplished. We've got the same problems. Let's look at the similarities, not the differences. Except that now might be the time to make a change. If there is something that's not working and you've tried it and you keep hitting your head against the fucking brick wall, then maybe you need to make a change. Stop procrastinating. Might be time. It might be time to take a serious look at yourself and make a change. And you're not alone in defeat. You're not alone in this. There's many of us that have gone through it. You don't have to feel alone. Let us help you. Perfect story. One of the other episodes I had recently with Jay Schiffman from the Choose Your Struggle podcast. Talked about the man in the hole. The man in the hole, he got stuck in this hole. He can't get out. 
doctor goes by and he's like, hey, man, help me get out of this hole. The doctor throws him uh, some pills and says, here, take these. Call me in the morning. Next guy that goes by is a philosopher, psychologist. It's like, hey, help me get out of this hole. And he throws down some Kierkegaard to him, some theories, books, some, some, some philosophy books and says, read these and see about why you're in the hole in the first place. Walks on by. Third guy comes along. He says, hey, man, help me. I need to get out of here. All of a sudden, the guy jumps into the hole. Now, the guy who was already in the hole is looking at him like, what the fuck, dude? Now you're in the hole with me. Why did you do that? The guy that jumps in the hole looks at him and says, you know why? Because last week I found myself in this hole, too. I know the way out. Let me show you. That's what we need to do today. If you're one of those people, reach a hand out to help that person out of the hole. And if you're one of those people in that hole, take that hand. Let them show you the way. It's not over, people. I know this last year has been very hard been very frustrating a lot of loss a lot of death a lot of financial misery a lot of addiction and using misery when it comes to that a lot of family issues job issues political issues but we do not have to live in this defeat we can have victory today Do you want victory today? Is that something that you're trying to fucking accomplish today? Do you want fucking victory? You're not going to get it sitting in your little self-pity party, playing the victim. You're not going to get it if every single time you get knocked down, you just stay there. This can make you stronger than you can even imagine how strong you can become by getting through this and coming out on the other side. I love everybody. It's why I do this podcast. I love you people. And I want to see you grow. I want to see you be able to have victory. I want to see you be able to have things in your life that makes you happy. I want you to have family that you love and hold close to you. I want you to have a marriage that you're so excited about and love being in. I want you to have a job that you just feel that that you're accomplished there and that you're appreciated and you're grateful for it. I want you to have recovery and feel that it was the best decision that you ever made. And with that, I say, I want to do it with you. I want to do it with you. I want to take your hand, and I want to walk through this journey together. Will you do that with me? Because I'll do it with you. That's going to be it for my episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy listening to my podcast. I want to thank everyone who does listen to the podcast and uh, who gives me a lot of... uh, Uh, encouragement makes me feel excited about the things that I'm doing on this podcast a lot of good things coming up in the year of 2021 for this podcast and I'm just excited to have you come along for the ride remember you can find me Facebook under Del Bacon I have the recovery atheist group through that page you can email me at the recovery atheist at gmail.com anytime you want send out topics uh, ask me questions if you need some help recovery wise anything like that let me know you can also find me on youtube the recovery atheist i have my own channel there and the big thing is you can take me wherever you go you can find me on spotify pandora uh, apple podcast iheart radio deezer i mean amazon music i'm on everything like 12 different platforms just 
You can use Alexa. Just ask Alexa to play the Recovery Atheist podcast. I do. I'm always listening to my shows to try to critique it and see how I can become better. Remember, it's all about becoming better. So take me on the go when you're on the go. Love everybody. Be safe out there. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Recovery Atheist Podcast. It's now up to you. What will you do with what you've heard? How will you use it? I challenge you not to stay silent. Be heard. Be real. Be different.